Last time we looked at redemption, which means the forgiveness of sins. And so as we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, 1 John 1, 9. So we know how to deal with sin now. We apply the blood to those sins. But sins always wound our soul and in turn our physical body. And it gives the devil opportunity to accuse us in the courts of heaven. Let's have a look in Revelation chapter 12 and verses 10 and 11. This is John speaking. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. But they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they love not their lives unto death. So let's take a common example. Many, many people have had in their lives, in their past life, sexual sin, like fornication, immorality, sexual looseness, in thought, word and deed. Now Paul writes in Corinthians 6, he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, whom you've received as a gift from God? You do not belong to yourself. You are not your own. You're bought with a price, the price of the blood of Christ. Now, fornication very often leads to unwanted children and then abortion, which is murder. And of course, this plays havoc with people's conscience. Well, I've had abortions and I've committed sexual immorality and so on, but abortion is a really deep wound. These sins and traumas leave wounds in our conscience. People feel very guilty and shameful as a result of such sins. And these wounds can last a whole lifetime. You can die, go to the grave with that wound. Go and see the doctor, give you some medicine, doesn't move it, doesn't shift it. Go to uh, the witch doctor, get him to cast a spell, won't move it. Nothing will get rid of the accusations in your conscience. Only the blood of Christ will shut them down. Here's some excellent scriptures from Hebrews again. In Hebrews 9 verse 14, the blood of Christ will purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. That's a great promise. The blood of Christ will purify our conscience. Well, when you find that out, you're very happy. So because of the high priest, Jesus, in Hebrews 10, 22, this is what we read. Let us therefore draw near to God with a true heart and a full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled and purified from an evil conscience. So when we apply the blood to our conscience, we can approach God in full assurance. He's not going to turn us away. He's not going to reject us. Now, just like the Jews had to apply the Passover blood, to the doorposts and the lintels of their houses. We have to apply the blood to our wounded conscience. Now notice in, in Revelation it says, we overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. We don't use hyssops, we use words. Now here is a model prayer, I'll go slowly so you can follow me. This is how you pray. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your precious blood. I apply your blood to my conscience, to my guilt and to my shame. And I wash it clean out of my conscience 
from this day onwards in Jesus' name. Now, after many years, perhaps, of feeling shame or guilt, those who now know how to do this and to apply the blood can move on into freedom and approach Father God with no fear of being rejected. Now, when to do this? Communion is a good time to do this because you take bread and juice or bread and wine. And as you take the cup, apply the blood. Say, this is the blood of Christ. And we apply it to our guilt, apply it to our shame and to other character faults, which we'll be talking about and which we'll become progressively aware of. We don't just take some bread and some, and some juice and eat them and drink them. We examine ourselves. That's what the Apostle Paul says we're to do in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 28 to 31. We examine and judge ourselves and listen. Let the Holy Spirit show you what other wounds and weaknesses are affecting your conscience. Search your conscience and confess the sins that cause the wounds, apply the blood to each one, and then apply the blood to the feelings and those wounds, like guilt and shame. Now we're going to be looking at other wounds in our soul caused by our sin, but also by ancestral iniquity. These are called character bents, and that's what we'll be looking at in our next video. So join me then and you'll enjoy it, I'm sure.